good day everybody I hope that today finds you fine and happy and uh, you doing the, the things you enjoy doing right I'm going to take you through now uh, the model called the Sinister Secret of Salt Marsh which is a run of a part of the run of UK models way back in the 80s and uh, the quality of these models was and still is excellent a high standard of models were introduced by the likes of Don Timber uh, for the TSR division in UK. This is one of the early ones and uh, it's got the U1 designation, which stands for United Kingdom 1. And this forms the first part of a trilogy of uh, models, and I will be covering them in later videos. So way back in 1981 this was produced and it, uh, it contains um, maps of the uh, haunted house and a 32 page booklet of the adventure. So basically the story goes that this village called Salt Marsh which is not detailed in here. We ask you to, as a dungeon master, to write uh, a thing about the Salt Marsh itself, you know, fill in all the details map it out and give the characters and uh, everything. In other words, they ask you to do all the hard work. I cheat it. I use the place called Daggerford as a basis for the uh, the setting. And Salt Marsh is the name of the house up on the hill away from Daggerford itself. And there's a lot of rumours that I introduced into the town as well as to say in this model of telling people, or the playing characters rather, about a haunted house and how there's screams and strange lights going on up there and so on, so on and so forth. Uh, you can um, tell the playing characters about the haunted house and if they're up with salt, they'll go and start uh, fighting whatever they think they'll find up there. Or you can get the uh, burgomaster or mayor to ask them to go up there to investigate and they will get a reward for it and so on and so forth. And being first level characters, I'm sure that they will be all too eager to go up and investigate. So for that premise and preamble, they go to investigate, as I just said. And, um, <coughs> excuse me, they have the key for every room is in the house, uh, but it's mostly the downstairs rooms and so on and so forth. But you also have a key for the upstairs room, where you meet uh, this guy, Ned Shakespeare. He's one of the villains of the piece. Uh, but basically what storyline, the background behind the storyline is that uh, the place is used as a, um, a dumping ground for smuggled goods because the smugglers use the house and they introduce the screaming sounds and uh, strange lights um, as a main means of keeping away prying eyes so that uh, they can do their operations covertly. Now the playing characters while they're standing about in the house alert the smugglers as to what's going on. So they introduce Ned Shakespeare, shove him upstairs and tie him up to make him look as like if he's one of the uh, victims who happened to stumble by and get kidnapped. And he's close mouthed about what actually did happen and so on and so forth. So the playing characters will, up to them, uh, rescue him or see him as a, a person of suspicion. It's entirely how they react to him that uh, you just done the master. Now, once he's freed, if he is freed, then he will ask to join the party, and when he does so, he must seek an opportunity to stab them in the back. And it's up to you as a dungeon master to find out when the best time to actually do that. So they explore the rest of the house, and when they get down to the cellar, they find there's a secret entrance into the cellar, which leads further on to a series of caves. Now there's a room in the cellar, uh, just to one side which has skeletons in there, and a corpse. I had great fun running this particular uh, part of the uh, model because um, there was no clues in the room as to how this chap died. There was no clue to say whether he was dead or undead or what have you. A total and utter mystery. Now, uh, as a dungeon master, if you wanted to, you could put a backstory about what happened to this guy and the reason why he died and leave the clue to that in the room. I didn't. I just wanted to get the, the characters run away with the imagination. I mean, uh, if the skeleton is in the room and there's a dead body, you know, what are they going to do? And it was great fun watching him, actions and reactions. So yeah, keep him as an unexplained mystery if you run that part of the uh, model and just watch him uh, try and find conflicted ways to explain what they are seeing. Great fun. So right, you go into the cabin itself and then you meet an illusionist which has uh, got null bodyguards, as you can see by the illustration here. A bit of a rusty, pathetic looking guy um, who's the artist trying to make look as villainous as possible. 
just ended up looking like uh, a total retard, if you ask me. And uh, given the fact that illusionist has colour spray, hypnotism, worn of fog and invisibility, it looks to me like he's firing magic missiles to the lady there, the fighter, I'm assuming, or the magician, I'm assuming magician. She's stuck in under the um, magic missile. Right, so let's go further on. And uh, the second part of the model is the smugglers themselves. I mean, in the book, it, uh, it's in the house to find the clues of the smuggling operation going. And this is the boat up in the sea. So uh, the plane carriers will go and investigate the boat, as they would do. And uh, she run that set of um, adventures and, uh, in that aspect and for so exploration of the ship. But here's the thing. If the uh, plane carriers don't actually do this well and sneak up to the boat and notice and so on and so forth and manage to eliminate the crew sneakily, the crew will be warned that they're there and they will defend the ship. And this crew, for the first ever kind of player carriers, is pretty tough. In other words, they would probably kill the party. So unless there's a real uh, luck with the dice rolls. So it can result in the TPK, so as a dungeon master, my suggestion is to reduce the amount of uh, crew, or even hit points of the crew, down so that uh, the um, brain carriers are better able to cope with the battle that will probably be ensued if they're discovered. Now, in the uh, models, uh, this part here, you find a character, and this character is locked up inside uh, one of the uh, holes of the uh, ship, and he, that is, he is the uh, springboard to go on to the next two models in the series. As I said earlier, it was a trilogy, and uh, this is the first one. And the typical tropes like Treasure Island, where the, the old villain goes climbing up the uh, rope, sail rope, guy on a bloody uh, thing there with a bow and arrow, tacking down. So, overall impression, brilliant. One of the best first level introductory models you can ever wish for. I mean, that and Daggerford. Daggerford's brilliant. Put this in there and it tears into a fine wine, if you like. It improves it. So if you play this properly and milk every single trope that you can of a haunted house mystery and put it in here, then you're well on your way to making it an absolutely brilliant time for the uh, playing characters. And there's also with uh, Halloween coming up, why not play it at Halloween? You get the atmosphere, candles around the table, and the uh, introduction of strange noises with tape in the background. You can make for a totally atmospheric and very, very well put together adventure. So, like I said, it's not a huge uh, adventure because it's just basically the environs of the haunted house. You probably be cover that in one night, maybe two. Um, but that uh, running that adventure and doing those two nights is uh, going to be a blast. So, uh, right, thank you very much for uh, for watching. I hope you have a good time. And uh, don't forget to, know, to subscribe if you would. And there's more videos that will be coming up uh, to cover the TSR models over the time. So, rock on and peace out.